This is a full review of the Mercedes C-Class Estate as a facelift because this one was missing in our coupe convertible and the sedan presentation. Now the estate for today, but of course in general also about the Mercedes C-Class facelift in exterior, interior and the driving experience because, well, I like the coupe most from design perspective, the convertible from the joy and the sedan maybe for its tradition, but the estate will be the most practical one for most buyers probably. And everything of that we'll examine together in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. When I grew up, my parents owned a used Mercedes and it was a red sedan. A um, little bit brighter in the color, but then also with a classic Mercedes star on top. And therefore this combination here with the classic executive grille and the red so much reminds me also of my own past. The facelift now here with the Mercedes C-Class offers a new design on the headlamps. You can get LED now and they are standard with the coupe and the convertible optional for sedan and the estate and optional you can not only pick the normal LED but also the multi-beam LED we see here for the high beam range that is even more increased. You can see here when the big Mercedes star is not there the sensors are hidden right there under this platform otherwise they can hide it between the black parts on the inside of the Mercedes badge. Would you go for the sporty front grille or here for the classic typical Mercedes one? And just a close up here for you to see this light sculptural work thing very beautifully done but by the way the base for estate and sedan are still halogen headlamps. And yeah I would always be afraid that someone rips this off you could see it's a little bit flexible here to the front uh, but again there's always the danger that some idiot breaks it and steals it and I mean yeah it's a behavior that's quite common but you know also one of the reasons why so many other customers went for the integrated star now. 4 meter 70 or 15 foot 4 is the length of the Mercedes C-Class. Here the estate still has a dynamic shape so to say with a shoulder line right there and I think for an estate it looks really very nice of course some really prefer the estate I you know, visual wise I prefer the coupe, but still I think it's a very decent design here, especially with the chrome frames. You can also get this night package when you prefer it in black. 18 inch rims, those ones are optional here in the sporty design scheme, so they also fit the red color for sure. And the door handles here below that, you have a design dropping line, but they more use a round shape for the overall design. What do you think? In the rear, the facelift also offers an update of this LED schematics right there. Looks a little bit more modern. Overall, the estate model there again for so the round functions. The C200 engine, soon talk about more of that. Mild hybrid engine. And then the lower part, this is, you know, it's not real fake exhaust, but it's a design element that is somehow mimicking exhaust pipes. I think it's still okay. And, you know, when you have chrome in the lower part and the upper part, still somehow fits to the overall design setup. Well, what do you think? The C-Class offers so many different engines, it's kind of confusing. A 2-liter diesel, a 1.6-liter diesel, a 4-liter petrol engine, 3-liter, 2-liter. Well, and then there's the 1.5-liter new petrol engine with an 84 horsepower plus 14 horsepower EQ boost. That's the 48 volt board net mild hybrid technology so you have a bigger battery basically on board not as big as with a true hybrid but bigger than a normal car battery would be Let's take a look at the interior together. There are new wood trims available for the 
interior. You can see this is the matte dark wood trim, very beautifully done. Then leatherette on top, so great build quality. Here also leatherette arm handles, plush materials, galvanized window buttons. There's still some room left here at the inside of the doors. This is the button there for opening the hatch from here. Then take a look at this new interior setup from the cockpit. Digital gauges, soon more details to that. Again, sporty forms here on top of that, wrapped tightly. Then those seats. Here the optional animal skin equipment. But already some sporty setup as for the seat form. You have different really cool surfaces available. In the US you can also get, um, of course, you know, just a sedan, but then again, counts for the seat surface as for beige, white and black MB techs. That's MB techs in US or Artico in Europe. That's the very high grade leatherette they're offering. In UK you can get the Artico in black and beige on the seat. And in Germany it starts with fabric seats as a base. Or you can also pick a mix then would be fabric, so Stoff in Germany, fabric on the inside and leatherette on the outside. Or then, for everyone, the AMG line is Dynamica microfiber on the inside and Artico leather on the outside. That's my sporty tip for today. Let's get inside with the shoe tap. And the C-Class, no matter if sedan or estate or whatever, offers good seating position even for taller people. Especially if you have no panoramic roof, there's even more headroom like this. Although I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 and all we have to see put a little bit higher just to have a little bit more upright angle. So good also for long motorway travel. The electric seat control is here at the inside of the doors. You've just seen that. Um, also the front part here of the seat has an electric control that you can put inside or more far out, especially for taller people. So we really like the seating position here and can also change the steering wheel with an electric control like this. So, of course, with the base seat variants and stuff, more as manual, then you can go with those options. And yeah, even if a C-Class starts at about 35,000, you can easily top it up, you know, with premium cars, you can, you know, easily double a price if you want. And if you pick a mid-size spec one, maybe 45, 50,000, yeah, it's pretty expensive, but also not common, not uncommon for the mid-size segment in the premium market. Interior overview, again, this sporty touch here, wrapped tightly with this edge as well, then aluminum inlet right there. The middle console now features this matte wood, really feels nice, doesn't leave any fingerprints, and a good choice alternative to this so far. You know, was only available with this black, shiny surface like here, that collects fingerprints and scratches. The steering wheel has also been redesigned, especially here with the thumb control on the right for the right screen and the left thumb for the left screen, all digitalized right now with the facet that's optional. It starts with 5.5 on the left, just a small one with analog then on the outside part and this small screen in the side. And on the right part with a seven inch, then this one, the optional 10.25 inch and on the left side the optional 12.3 inch. So here in the C-Class the screen is still not touched. You control it with the central turning off in the lower part. You have a nice map really but I'm not super happy with the map software. Sometimes it misled me. Then the telephone can be connected via Bluetooth or also the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is available and when you pick that you can still hear the music and use GPS from the car system. That would be very important for me. It has a good resolution, this screen, so overall okay with the system, but also from the menu structure, it's not that intuitive, I have to say. Of course, a lot of functions you can still pick here, also for as for the climatization, um, like the style, and they always have really nice pictures in the middle part. Those digital instruments offer you more flexibility. You can have the GPS map in the middle part, for example. There, as I didn't have any destination, just showed the compass, basically. You can have your phone information, call someone. You can check the settings of a um, head-up display, for example. And you also have different styles for the gauges. You can change them 
according to your wishes have those three different styles. For the head-up display you can change the brightness for example you all do that in the digital instruments you can also change the position depending then on your height that's also a good solution and also what you want to see actually um, like the allowed speed the current speed or also then you get gps information uh, when you have a route selected i'm talking about the route you can also for example have it here on the right side of the digital instruments so pretty flexible again the climate unit is still separate here with making it colder or warmer good to have that you can easily control also then while driving mm, again this nice matte wood one of my favorite features in this vehicle and this cover here also then covers the adaptive cup holders as well as a smartphone either with uh, inductive charging pads right in the front there or right here i connect it with the cable for the apple carplay this usb slot in the front is exactly then for this connection they can also see the according symbol next to using your thumbs to control the infotainment system you can still use it with the central turning and pressing knob this one you have to lift the air suspension the optional one up if you have some obstacles this is the drive mode selector i'll talk about the drive modes when we um, take a look close at the driving part later on and this is the separate camera button also for the automatic parking feature and the camera system is really fancy as you can see here great resolution drone view from above and this optional top spec trim and you can just choose the wide angle rear or then the side for protecting your alloys or in the front or the wide angle front this would then be the um, parking feature that the car searches for its own parking spot and then automatically parks in and out but mm, usually i just do it myself for the middle console is always a nice solution to have this central knob and then this folding up mechanism and here inside you have two more usb supplies and those are just for charging and not for connecting your phone getting in the rear is of course always really exciting in those mid-size cars here they have an advantage that they have shaped the back part of the seat the way that the knees exactly fit there because here in the middle part it would not but on the outside my knees do fit it's not the specialty of this very vehicle to have the most legroom in the rear so um again it is basically standard for the segment especially in the premium uh, competition right there but of course there are other cars which have more legroom uh, Volkswagen Passat for example and of course yeah a Skoda Superb <laughs> has like this leg room Audi A4 and BMW 3 Series are not really that much better right there I think the A4 has a little bit more leg room it should have more leg room considering the length I think headroom of course this is totally okay even for me and the side part here is actually quite voluminous so that narrows the area here a little bit for the shoulders so overall not the biggest fan here of the comfort in the rear part and i turned the engine on that you can see here that you optionally can get also an ac for the rear seats with temperature and vent control other than that you have the isofix for the child seats at the outside seats and the middle armrest can be fold open and you also have some cup holders right there and since this is a rear wheel driven car either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive you can see the middle tunnel is that huge that sitting in the middle part seat is not realistic for an adult let's look at the hatch together so you have also a foot opening mechanism other than that you press the lower button or at the key then you have a nice floor mat for example you could also change it on the other side it's just an option and you can also go with a normal floor and you have for example here shopping basket <laughs> foldable underneath and well good dimensions this is the big advantage here of the estate and here an automatically folding up cover that's also a handy solution it goes down and automatically but you can also totally remove it and here with those buttons you can release the rear seats and then have the maximum loading volume with an even surface really cool and just to show you the dimension with the cabin trolley here we go you can also put it upright of course if you like what's up guys thomas is driving lounge today with the c200 and the mercedes c-class as the so-called t-model t -model or estate well i'll tell you something about the differences sedan 
Coupé convertible estate because now driven all four of the C-Class facelift models and also about this new C200 engine because it has this mild hybrid. And I can see it here in the digital displays. This is also one reason to maybe go for it. While driving, by the way, they are quite pleasant to look at. It's a very crystal clear display, also with this blue atmosphere, blue mood it is creating. It's very clear to read, digital speed, and also then this digital visualization of the old analog instruments. I really like it, although I still would also be happy with the classic analog ones. So it's always the question if you want to pay the extra price. So with this EQ boost or EQ charge then, you have this mild hybrid system. That means you recuperate some energy, although you're not driving in real hybrid or real electric vehicle and the energy is then used for example you know for systems the car is running or also for some acceleration boost with then supposed to put the consumption a little bit lower and always when I lift my foot off the throttle and especially when I hit the brakes or so then I see this charge let's say area running running full so I can see how much the car is recuperating especially in city traffic it might make sense and I've already completed some first test rides and tried to bring the consumption as low as possible on the motorway and that added up with about 7 liters on 100 kilometers and now we are about 7.5 with some more city traffic yeah I mean that's not too bad but I would have wished it would be a little bit lower since I was really looking forward to this uh, C200 mild hybrid. For a mid-size vehicle this is actually quite normal as for the consumption. Uh, if you compare it for example with an Audi A4 Avant, Holger has one and therefore basically in a long-term driving test. And the consumption is quite equal also with a you know, equal power petrol engine. This is by the way a warning here from the blind spot monitor, it's a useful system as soon as I use the turning indicator the warning is not only visual but also acoustic when the car is next to me. Other than that I just get a red warning triangle there in the side mirrors. I can show you that because this guy is obviously speeding now the red triangle is speeding if I want to use the turning indicators, also acoustic warning. The blind spot monitor is one of the features you should go for. A basic autonomous emergency brake is standard with the C-Class, that's good. Then you can also extend it, I would also go for that one. And then the blind spot monitor, the best systems. And then the ACC, the adaptive cruise control, well here it's called this Tronic, has now with the C-Class facelift moved from the separate shifting column you have here at the steering wheel head onto the steering wheel it's actually a little bit easier to use now I think it's a good decision to do that and one of the best systems on the market here also this lane keeping assist we have here so this is packed with all the assistance systems is working very smoothly so we talked about in the tour rec review sometimes mm, those systems overreact a little bit but here I have it activated at the moment and I still have very natural driving feeling. Some corrections are being made when I'm getting too close to the side of the road. But overall I'm very happy with that here. By the way, funny finding. When you drive with the star there in the front, you, you always see it also when driving. And it makes the car somehow more special. You immediately somehow get the feeling, yeah, you know, I'm driving less sporty, I'm driving more elegant, I'm more something. <laughs> and of course, it always reminds me of the past. Um, this old Mercedes we used to own, the 123, that was really something. So um, somehow still special, hardly anyone does that anymore with the, uh, with the figures or with the logos on the very top. Why not if you, if you really like it, but of course, if you want it a little bit sportier, and you put the big star in the very front. So with the facelift here, they 
did some tweaks here and there, they didn't change super much. Overall, you can say that the sound insulation is really good. Here at lower speeds, you hear nothing from the outside. Also among the best in the mid-size segment, together with Audi. We will, of course, eagerly await the new performance of the BMW 3 Series, the only generation of that one we've already presented to you in a static review. Soon we'll head the motorway with this one, and then we can test the sound insulation at a little higher speed. The steering feel for this Mercedes is usually rather natural, not too progressive, so you have to steer a little bit more than, for example, with an Audi A4. And there you can especially pick the progressive steering, an additional one, it's even more progressive. Progressive means here, for example, you see, I have to turn the steering wheel sharper than the actual corner is. And some people rather prefer that the steering is not reacting so much and it's a rather natural feeling. For me, I like it a little bit sporty, a little bit more progressive, that they have to steer a little bit less and be a little bit more precise in the steering handles. But overall, it's still a good car to feel and to handle. Um, you can pick the different driving modes. At the moment, I'm in the Eco mode, that the EQ charge is also working. For example, now I'm going downhill, just leave my foot off throttle, it's charging a little bit. As soon as I apply some brakes, now the targeting is maximum possible. And after that, of course, you know, long brakes also being applied. So you can save some fuel with that. Um, also showing me this eco score, telling me about one kilometer I already saved just now on this very short trip. Um, very interesting. And you can also change the driving modes to some other modes like the comfort mode where this optional air suspension we've inbuilt here is set on the most comfortable mode, together, same with the eco mode. The suspension is just superb. I mean, air suspension in mid-size segment, that's really cool. Of course, again, cost intensive. If you want the most comfort, it is also an option you should think about. So this is giving me a very good ride. It's not that you would be flying in the air, then with some of the very soft air suspension, it is rather sporty already for a base model. Then you can also adapt it a little bit or use this um, pumping up function. If you see some, you know, you know there's some like light off-road situations and you need more ground clearance, you just press it here, even it's turning into traffic light and you also hear like, like uh, hear the way it working and then the car's going a little bit up and now it's feeling very weird because it's a little bit higher. Of course the suspension um, is rougher in a way because you lose spring travel. Can we talk about spring travel when we have an air suspension? And that's maybe an own subject to discuss, but you know what I mean. So let's go <laughs> the normal down mode again. And we can also put it to sport mode. Then we can turn up the gears even higher. Car is shifting up later and shifting down earlier. We'll also test it with the acceleration on the motorway. So you still have you know, a choice because the C200 here, I mean, with the 1.5 liter of displacement, it's not the most powerful engine. It doesn't come so naturally when you're driving slowly, but you can always use the shifting pedals to go a gear down if you have some more acceleration or in the sport mode, then this will also give you a better acceleration and it's more harmonious. Um, so from zero to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour, it is about eight seconds. That's still totally enough. So you actually do not need a stronger engine for a C-Class in general for most of the purposes and I'll also show you how it is then acceleration wise on the motorway. So if you drive it calmly you sometimes feel oh, you know really relaxed and stuff and but you can definitely also drive it in a sporty way. You can also go to the Sport Plus mode. Rear wheel drive of course for this vehicle standard for the C-Class. There are also all-wheel drive models available of course. So even up here now, no problem, but let's put it to 60 kilometers an hour and accelerate through to 100. Oh, that's it. You heard it at first that the car wanted to a little, even lower gear. If I would have done it 
manually, it would be even faster, but you can see you still got an abundance of power reserves if you really need them. So yes, the size of the engine is enough. The mild hybrid system is also not too bad. Mm, I would have wished it could do a little bit more, so I would say it's nice, but to me it's not a super game changer. It is maybe for them in the fleet consumption because on paper it does even more and it was the same with the bigger cars we've been testing with Mercedes and Audi with the mild hybrid system. They do that because they save a lot on fuel on paper, brings down the fleet consumption of the whole brand and then they pay less for example for those CO2 certificates. So that's the reason behind it. Is it really super useful for the customer? Not super useful maybe a little mm. but again so uh, the test result here is really that again it's okay but it's not a game changer so that's um, you know the verdict here for me but still the c-class is a super decent ride here in the mid-size segment it's also one of my favorite mercedes because it is somehow in the middle of everything you know it's not too long but it's not too tiny it already offers a great comfort for taller people and you can have longer motorway rides and you still really relax when you arrive your destination then especially as the estate here you can do so much with it still good loading capacity and stuff whoa those are really slow here damn i want to get before the truck they can we just let them drive for a second because then I want to take the, the, the you know, next roundabout a little bit faster. Getting off the motorway now, more towards countryside routes. And we have some agility test. The sedan doesn't feel different from the estate to drive. That doesn't make any difference. The coupe and the convertible are of course a little bit different chassis wise. So they have a little bit sportier touch for sure. good acceleration even uphill the engine noise are really minor you know you can see again the turning of the steering wheel but still the car conveys a good feeling when driving it overall that truck is really quite fast around those corners here too so overall it is a very likable driving feeling the c-class is always con conveying and is hardly much to criticize with this very vehicle that's I think you know also one of the key factors here so they improve the small things bit by bit by bit that truck is obviously a, a, a truck reviewer and wants to do the same reviewing sequence here than I do <laughs> maybe I should stop in and you know give him a handshake and say hey what's your video because otherwise no one gets off the yeah okay turning in another direction that was quite fast there as well people racing nowadays even when just 100 is allowed so we're getting off here now we're getting a little bit faster off that i can still also hammer the brakes at the lower part and such a confident ride and silent ride also now at higher speeds good sound insulation now i'm hammering the brakes a little bit harder good control here also keeping the track knowing where i want to go so in every single little discipline, the C-Class is, you know, maybe not the super most best in segment in every way, but um, among the best for sure. And just satisfies me in all the different aspects I could theoretically test with the vehicle. What's also nice, by the way, if you want some in, uh, of the assistance systems deactivated, just left of the steering wheel, you can hit the buttons and then they're deactivated. That's also a cool thing to do and mm, those nice new wood trims they also please me while driving you know sitting at this traffic light here and then looking at some of those, those matte wood trims i would really go for that also satisfied with the seat form and driving longer now i do have more comfort than in a mercedes a-class in a mercedes e-class yes you have even a little bit more comfort but then again there's a big price difference if you have missed that we did on the Paris Motor Show well as well, did a special episode, A-Class sedan versus C-Class versus E-Class versus S-Class. But of course, those comparisons also 
not only count for the sedans, but as well for the estate models. Well, there's a seal A shooting brake somehow in A class estate model, but you know, you know what I mean. So, if you pick a sedan or estate, usually just makes a difference in the very rear end, and not, you know, how much room you have in the front and stuff, and infotainment and room in the rear. So you could really compare that in those in those episodes. Again, confident right here. Also, when I go some left and right, it's always fun to do it. But still, this C-Class gives you enough calmness in the drive. If you want it even sportier, you can go for one of the sports models. Our C43 review was also very interesting. There you had the sporty punch. We had great roads to drive there. Surely a lot of fun to drive. But I also enjoy this one here with the powerful enough engine. Even if I would have wished it here to be a little bit more fuel saving with this new technology. But with the air suspension especially, it's always such a good ride. And then with the driving modes, you can always adjust it just a little bit as you like. You know, when sport here, a little bit sportier and, and so on. But most of the time you try to relax and this car is really used also for company purposes, for purposes for the long commutes. I think it's still a very, very suitable vehicle for that. Now to our conclusion for today with the Autogefühl here and the C-Class facelift as an estate. Well, the classic look here with the star on top definitely still has something, although the other modern look is a little bit sportier. The estate remains the most versatile variant of the C-Class model lineup because you can just put so much in the rear then. Maybe not the design favorite, but again, the most useful ones for the most people that want to do so many things differently with the very vehicle. Overall, the car is still one of the best in the segment. It's not super spectacular for sure. It's a mid-size segment car, but it does everything just right. The interior has also a good design. Yeah, the screen setup, you know, it needs a touchscreen maybe not right now new digitalization with a facelift that came right now, also with a head-up display. The room on the interior is quite okay. They have different uh, seat surfaces, choices. They are also quite decent. And also then the advantage to have more luggage capacity here with the estate model. Would you also go for the estate model? Tell us in the comments. The new C200 we tested here, it is enough power-wise with this petrol engine However, I expect a little bit more usefulness of this mild hybrid system. It's not too bad, but it's also not a game changer, as I said. What do you think? Leave me your comments right there about this very vehicle. And also tune in to our other Mercedes C-Class reviews, please.